Good afternoon and welcome to the Small Business Cheerleader podcast. I'm Nicola from NW Marketing, the Small Business Cheerleader, and I'm joined today by Kate Burgess from Kate Burgess Digital. How are you? Good, thank you. Thanks for having me. (laughs) Wonderful. We are here to talk about one of my favourite subjects and one I have the most questions about from clients, (laughs) Facebook advertising and Facebook ad funnels, and that's what we're going to dive deep into today. For those that might be new to Facebook and exploring the idea of setting up funnels for your service-based business when it comes to lead magnets, offers, we're going to chat it all. So introduce yourself, tell everyone, where are you from and what led you to Facebook ads? Um, So Kate, I'm currently in Perth, WA, but I'm about to move to Edinburgh in Scotland. So I move next week, which is really exciting. Um, And I have my business is just over a year old now. So I have a um, corporate marketing background and then I sort of discovered the online world small business world and I realized why I was like why am I sitting in an office I don't like when I can be doing what I'm doing in my own terms and now be able to move countries so um yeah I just sort of figured why not try now while I don't have you know mortgage or kids and things give it a well no life responsibilities I love <laughs> um, that I love it yeah. so now it's Facebook Facebook yes. ads yeah, and so I've just slowly gone into there. I've always liked Facebook ads. I don't know. I love the analytic side of it and things like that. And I guess it should, I find it, not everyone finds it interesting, but I find it really interesting to like test different creatives and messaging and audiences against each other and things you think might work really well don't. And then just sort of you're forever testing, refining. And I don't know, it's a really amazing way to, help people grow their business in a, I guess, simple, strategic way. Yeah, I love it. You can nerd out for hours yes. <laughs> on testing images, headlines, copy, short copy, long copy, this this version of the lead magnet versus this yeah. one. Um, as people know, I've done Facebook ads as well. And I love it. But it's so many changes. So hence why mm. a professional like yourself that is <laughs> knee deep in this stuff is where you need to be if you're looking to explore it. But we're going to give you a tester and a taster today of the things that you can ask your Facebook professional so that you're going in there armed with information and you're not going to be led astray because there are those that will charge you a fortune and give you nothing and those that are very focused on small business and will support you like yourself, support you through your journey and teach you along the way. You do heaps of great free value on your um, Um, online platforms, which um, I love because this is stuff that small business owners need to adopt. It doesn't mean they know how to, but they need to. So we're going to start firstly with what is a Facebook ads funnel? People hear it all the time. Funnel, funnel, funnel. Yes, Mm -hmm. there's a sales funnel. There's also how you work your Facebook ads in a funnel. So explore that and what that actually is. What is a funnel? So I guess the best way to describe it is it's just the journey you're taking a customer from a virtual stranger to someone you want that is going to buy everything from you. So how you take them along that journey or what that journey look like looks like is going to be dependent on your business. So essentially it's called a funnel because it is literally like a funnel and you want to funnel as many people in the top because not everyone's going to buy from you and that's completely fine. But the more people you can continually funnel in the top, and then you slowly warm them up and they take you take them along your customer journey to ultimately buy your offering, your course or whatever it might be. And it's how you warm them up because it comes back to that no like and trust factor. And especially in a service based industry, people when you, you know, your ticket, your higher ticket offers might be in the thousands of dollars. So someone's not going to buy something from you if they don't know you yet. So you need to warm them up and you need to have whether that be along your social media and your DMs, it could be in your emails and how you warm them up to get them to buy from you is essentially your sales funnel. So I think it sounds a bit more scary, but a lot of people already have a funnel set up and a simple basic funnel is your Instagram. You're feeding people in your Instagram. So you might funnel people in through your reels, your stories, your posts and things like that. You might nurture them along your stories, continual posting, maybe in your DMs, and then they might contact you through there and then you sell to them. So that's like a really 
basic, simple funnel that you already have. Majority of people already have that. Um, and then it can get more complex along the way when you have ads or email marketing and things like that set up as well. Yeah, exactly. Because your ads are going to get you in front of the people and your ads are ultimately you can set them up to warm an audience up or I mm -hmm. use um, Eugene Swartz of five levels of customer awareness when I talk to clients about how to build people up through a process to make them um, when they're unaware all the way up to most aware and ready to purchase and Facebook mm -hmm. ads form a major part of that in the unaware or getting them into solution aware, that sort of level, because you, your ads will get you in front of them to pique their interest in either realizing that, oh, I may have a problem, or they know they have a problem and they're like, oh, she has a solution. So yep. this is where ads are really important as a factor in that funnel and then can lead to, um, you know, if they download a, a lead magnet you have, can then go into email marketing, can't they, with yep. your nurture sequences. It is and does sound a little bit complex, but when you break it down, it's very much just how we are as humans. It's just a matter of how you can get to those people at various stages on their, yep. their purchase journey with you, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And utilising ads with a lead magnet is an awesome way to grow your email list because these days there's so many different avenues. There's so much content online. Not everyone's going to see your stories. Not everyone's going to see your posts, but if you can get someone's email and name, you then have that direct contact with them because everyone checks their emails every day. So it's just another way of getting in front of that person and your ideal client for them to ultimately buy from you. Yeah, because and we've had this when I think it was last year, was it, or earlier this year when Instagram went down and everyone lost yeah. their mind because yeah. they had been putting so much focus into Instagram building and forgetting that email marketing and email list is, is ultimately an asset to your business because you own it. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, you and I talk in, um, in regards to cost per lead and yeah. that ultimately is what you are paying for. You're paying for someone's email. Mm -hmm. So in an ad, if you have a lead magnet, they're making a decision as to whether that lead magnet is worth their email address. Mm -hmm. And you can then assess the performance of your ad, can't you, based on your actual uh, cost per lead or cost per yeah. download or whatever you want to call it, because you are, you're paying for that, but you own that. And that becomes an asset if you ever sell your business, which is why I try and tell clients, you need to have a broad-based strategy, don't you, where you're having... Um, all of that, because if you just focus on your socials, as we found when Instagram went down, you don't own that, <laughs> that information yeah. or access to any of those people. You are just renting that literally by having that yeah. platform available. And Facebook ads have to be part of a strategy to build a list. I love that. Now tell me, what do you need in a funnel? What are the key tips or what do you need to have in a funnel, a Facebook ads funnel? So Facebook ads, email marketing is key because essentially when you run the ads, you need to know what you're going to do with them. So you need an end goal. I like to sort of, when I talk to clients about it, I like to start with like what their end goal is and work back from there, because say you want to make five sales, you need to make sure you need to know how many people you need in the top of your funnel. So maybe you need a hundred people to come down your funnel and five are going to convert into sales. So you need to know your end goal. And also you need to know what you're going to do with these people once you've got their email or whatever you're going to do with them. Because if you don't know what to do with them, there's no point running ads. It's essentially just like stockpiling all these email addresses and then, or you get them and then you ghost them. And then all of a sudden you want to speak to them three months later and they've completely forgotten who you are. So knowing where you're going to send them and what you're going to do with them is sort of key as well. So making sure you have your email marketing set up with your nurture sequence, and that could be nurturing them into maybe a webinar. And then from your webinar, you can sell your new course or your offering, or maybe you want to sell a small digital product. So you could even start gathering email addresses and then your email nurture sequence into selling a small digital product. So just sort of really knowing what to do with them um, and your email marketing, landing pages. Landing pages is a big one that people don't really realize need to be set up correctly too because if you just have a landing page 
with not much information on there or who you are and things like that, people maybe not, you're not going to convert people either. Yeah, because you're taking them from um, a top of funnel seeing the ad and then they're clicking through normally to learn more and they're going to a sales page. So use that sales page to warm them up even more. Testimonials are good on there. A look, your proof of uh, social proof as to why they should download whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And then that allows you to give them that second chance to, to really be involved. And then um, it's a matter then of using that, using tags, isn't it? If they go yeah. through, you know, where they've come from so you can track um, their progress as a customer. There's a lot to it, but it's not hard. It just involves a strategy. Mm -hmm. And another thing that um, I've been exploring lately is the lead generation ads within Facebook. Since um, the iOS update and everything happened with conversion ads, um, there is another option there for lead gen ads where you can actually have a form within Facebook and yes. have a download for your um, digital product or lead magnet and then use something like Zapier to link it to your email marketing. I've been testing both just to see how that works for me, but it is an option where everything happens yeah. within Facebook and you don't need a landing page, but um, you know, just look at what your objectives are, hey, and then see which one would work best for you. Yeah, there. I've also been doing the same, and I like some other people I've spoken to as well. With the comparing the conversion to the lead gen, a lot of people are saying the conversion are bringing a better quality lead than the lead gen. Plus, you also need to pay to have Zapier or something to connect it. Mm -hmm. So it, you might get a lower cost per lead, but the quality of lead might be better coming through your com straight conversion ad. Yeah, exactly. Because so, mm -hmm. what happens with those lead gen ads that people may or may not know is it obviously autofills usually on your phone and it's a yep. lot easier for people to do it. So people tend to be lower quality um, conversions if they come through those than those that would have had to take the time to go to a separate sales page, read that and then put their information in. Yeah, so, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And it just depends on where you sit. I've had um, results for both yeah. and um, it, it's interesting. So I think it's a testing, like we said before, test your audience. Some of them might be um, better quality for you and your mm -hmm. business on Facebook and some aren't. So, yeah. you, you know, test both and then you'll know instead of guessing. And I think yeah. that's where it comes down to it. So if you're scared, you don't want to set up a sales page and you're all, you know, worried, there is the option of doing a lead gen with a form in there. And then Zapier, you get, I think, three zaps for free or whatever if you need to test it. And mm -hmm. see how you go. But yeah. also that's where a professional comes in and they yes. can help see your product, see what you're trying to achieve and see which one will work for you. Yeah. And I think um, that's uh, where a funnel is so important in getting some professional input, I think, in, in doing it right first up instead of wasting all that time. Yeah, and I think, I think like you said before, with the testing thing and stuff with ads, that's, I guess... What And I always try to be quite transparent on my accounts with clients and things that they aren't a magic bullet mm -hmm. and they do take time to learn and you are consistently testing and refining and it might actually take months. Like Facebook ads isn't a, a week sort of thing. It, you're talking months with ads. And so I think as well, I had a few clients come that were with some agencies before and they didn't even really know like where their ad spend was going and things like that. And they didn't know what results what was happening and and that's why ads can also get a bit of a bad rap as well I think because they just think it's money flying out the window which is why you need a strategy and you need to know what you're doing when you're in there but as well just remembering that it's not a quick fix and you need to think about it as a long-term month months sort of thing. 100%. Yeah. It is a long-term game. It's about yeah. building and it's about growing. And also people may also, you know, need to get to know you. And yes. that's when um, there's, we were talking before about the different types of ads you can run. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, of course you have those lead gen ads um, or conversion ads if you're doing it to a sales page. Yeah. And then you've got your retargeting when you're doing mm -hmm. retargeting ads, um, talk through what retargeting ads are because people hear about it, but they don't quite get a lot of the time what it actually incorporates. So retargeting is literally just contacting those warm, your warm audience, retargeting or warm audience. So anyone that's in that is anyone that's visited your website, been on the sales page, um, in your current email list, Facebook, 
uh, page, Instagram page, anyone that's done video views as well. So that's all your warm audience because they already know you. So the reason you're retargeting them is because they're familiar with you. So it's usually a smaller pool of people than say your cold audience because those people don't know you. So your retargeting or warm audience is people that know you, which is where you can do your direct selling. So for example, if you have decided to do Facebook ads for your next course launch, you would start off with lead magnet ads because you're building your list, you're building your audience, and this would be to your cold audience. So you're testing different types of audiences, you're testing different creative and copy and things like that. And then you can do ads to say your live webinar or live event as well. And that would be a mix between maybe some lookalike audiences, your cold audiences as well, and people who have been on your website. And then once you've done your live event and you're going to start selling, so your doors are open to your course, that's when you only retarget people who are in your warm audience because usually with a course and you do that big warm-up period, it's because it's a high ticket offer. So you're talking in the thousands of dollars. So that's why you need the months of leading up and warming up these people to get to know you because when you ask someone to join your course, that's $2,000, it is a bigger consideration. So you're not going to retarget people with that don't know you with your $2,000 course. You only want to see people to see that, that have been you interacting with you the whole time. Yeah, that's exactly right. Because you want to make sure that you're doing the work and warming them up and yep. then making sure that you're going to get the benefit of that at the other end because it Correct. does take work. I mean, people, yep. we've got to bring it back to what it's like dealing with normal people. Mm. <laughs> you're not just going to go up to them yes. and say, hey, I'm yeah. Nicola, here's my $2,000 course. Yeah. They're like, who you want to buy it? Yeah. yeah. And that's why we use stories and Instagram, isn't it? And your posts, because your stories is where you get, you know, your warm audiences and you're more likely to sell in your stories. We yeah. know that your feed is more about your niche because you want to start building people up who happen to find you. And yes. then they want to know more about you and your stories. It's the same yeah. with your ads. And and yeah. when you're talking about uh, lookalikes, you can yeah. also, um, lookalikes take people that have done similar things that follow your page already. Yes. And the people that you have email lists, you can put your email yep. list into Facebook yep. and you can create a lookalike audience from that too or, or similar yep. things. Yeah. yeah so that's there's a right. lot of. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, you just tell Facebook to do it and Facebook goes and does it. It's fine. God, God love them. That's yep. good. At least they do something right every now and then. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> I mean, as much as it's a definite love hate relationship with everyone and Facebook, mm -hmm. we know we need mm -hmm. them, but we also know they're a global conglomerate that have control of us. So between all of that, they do good work in getting our businesses yes. in front of eyeballs. Yes. And of course, Facebook ads are also Instagram ads. We've yes. got to remember yeah. that for those that don't yeah. know, because people say to me, but I don't want to do Facebook ads. I want to, I want to um, advertise on Instagram. I'm like, yeah, it's the same thing. You mm -hmm. can do on both. You can pick both. You can pick one. You can do stories. You can do reels. Yes. Um, you can do a video ad that runs on reels. I mean, how cool is that? So there is yeah. so much targeting options available for you that doesn't involve press boost post. Yeah. That's what I want people to know. You have Correct. so much more control of your dollar than just pressing boost yes. post, you know. Yes. So explore what that looks like. I, I think, what have you found when, when dealing with clients that are new to Facebook world? Yeah, um, the and I think that maybe that the it should stop being called Facebook ads and maybe meta ads. Yeah, um, because I know I've had that too, and I guess because I work in it, I just don't even think about it, but people are like, well, what about Instagram ads? I'm like, oh, well, it's the same, same thing. Um, and some people do just want to be on Instagram, but Facebook still has like 2.6 billion users per month. So it's not like a null and void, you know, platform. It is still super useful. And you may as well throw them on Facebook as well as Instagram, even though you're personally only on Instagram doesn't mean no one else is on Facebook as well and so I think people think just because they're on Instagram it's not relevant to them yeah um, and it's, 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 not, 
knowing your ideal client, isn't it? Yes. Also, where are they? And you've got to remember, a lot of people are on Facebook only for groups these days. Some people, Mm. you know, they're on Instagram for looking, but on Facebook for groups and networking. Mm -hmm. But the ads will still show. So yeah. when people are on there for their groups only, you're still seeing those ads. So um, even marketplace, that, like marketplace, yes. they show on marketplace and, and everything. Explore well. pages so, and um and I've seen my ad show up when I'm googling stuff, and my yeah. ad will show on you know. So you can choose where it shows, and you can also tailor the um the the look of the ad to suit that platform. Yes. If it's on stories, it can look different to your post. So you've got so much option there to really stand out. You can make a video that shows on your stories. So why not get creative or a professional can help you do that. But you don't just need to boost posts. It's your money that you're using. Why would you not want to give it the best go at being seen and converting? I don't don't understand why you would not want to, if at all possible. So that's what we're here today to give you a bit of knowledge about how to maybe explore these things that you haven't thought about. Don't just press boost, go into your ads manager, um, have a look at the targeting options, explore that. There's plenty of tutorials and you have great value on your page as well, but it does invest investment in a professional with Facebook ads, I think is imperative when a small business has only so much money. You want to make sure that you're getting the best for that dollar. Yeah. 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 And like, I guess even, if you even choosing the right objective is going to have a huge effect because essentially if you choose say a reach objective you're telling Facebook to just go find as many people that's going to look at it as possible people looking at something isn't a, isn't going to get you anything like yeah you might get a really great reach but reach doesn't equal money so that's why you want to sort of be really careful in how you set it up because you want that conversion set up or lead gen set up because then you're telling Facebook to go find the people that are going to download this and are going to sign up to your email list because there's no point in just having people look at your ad. It's just not good, especially for what you want. I mean, there's, if you have a huge ad budget, there's different ways you can use the reach function, um, but that's a super long-term strategy. But for sort of what we're talking about and growing your email list, you want to make sure that you set the right um, objective up from the start so Facebook knows what to do. Facebook's yeah. smart. You don't need to, I'm not doing that personally. I'm telling it what to do. <laughs> yeah, you're taking that knowledge of which way to go and then you're letting that money that you're putting in, Facebook yeah. do the best value for that dollar. Yeah. And and also when it, comes, um, when it comes down to objectives, people think I need to reach out because I need to reach as many people. But what I keep saying when I've, I've talked in the past about small businesses don't have the budget of a reach type of marketing campaign because in any sense be it press billboards whatever the best marketing for us is direct response marketing where you have the you know you identify someone's problem you offer a solution and then you have a call to action so that may be a lead magnet that hits a pain point of someone offering a solution because you will get instant responses to that and the more in tune you are to your ideal client the more likely it is to convert but by just putting hey I'm Jane and I do eyebrows is not so does everyone else and yeah. it's not going to have any impact so getting more specific more niche based in what it is you're offering what the solution is and then providing them something to do isn't it a mm-hmm. call to action call me book now download now sign up now what is it they're doing and then mm-hmm. like you said work backwards you know what is it you want and then work backwards, work backwards. And yeah an app that does that yeah and i think there's there's a bit of an art form as well to the creative and copy too like um and even your landing page like there's not you know not a copy and paste formula but there's definitely especially in the small business world words to use and ways to really attract that person to get them to download it for you yeah absolutely I've discovered that through testing over many times on how you can actually really get to someone quickly if you sort of have their problem solution call to action some form of structure then mm-hmm. it's more likely to, to impact them. Um, and that's where a copywriter can come in too. Yes. Um, if yeah. the, you know, when it comes to making sure your sales pages, uh, your lead magnet sales page and your Facebook ads are all very coherent because then it will have that trust factor, won't it? People will get a sense of, oh, okay, this is well looked and thought through. 
Yeah, um, yeah, and I'm yeah, not yeah. just, you know, downloading something that somebody's thrown together because you wouldn't. I mean, why would you give your email address to something that doesn't do that? Yeah, exactly. I actually read the other day someone, a copywriter put up a really awesome post. I can't find it again. It's really annoying me because it was so good um, about the structure of a sales page and how important it is and not just like, you just don't want to send someone to look at it and say what they're getting. You need to like be addressing their pain points and really like getting to that emotional reasoning of why they actually need it and why the conversion of your sales page is so important because I think that's also overlooked sometimes as well. Yeah, absolutely. I put a post up the other night just talking about um, talking to your customers' emotions. Like I used to do work with tradies and that we'd have to do Facebook ads for decking, you know, and of course, you know, everyone wants a deck, et cetera. It's very, um, a very male masculine energy. But ultimately in our ads, we were talking to the emotions and the imagery was talking to the emotions. What's the result that they want at the end of it? Yeah, they want a deck, but why do they want a deck? Get yeah. deeper. They want yeah. their family over for Christmas. They want that image the of family, having family parties. on the deck. They want that. Yeah. They don't want yeah. the deck. So don't sell, you know, the whole, the old saying, don't sell the steak, sell the sizzle. It's the same yeah. when it comes to talking about anything. Mm-hmm. Sell what their ultimate life will look like by what your solution is yeah. yeah and then yeah. people you know they buy with emotion they back it up with logic later we know that but we get all very tech savvy and we we think we have to talk about us and why we're the greatest and why they should be with us yeah, yeah. No, nobody cares they just okay. want to know how we're going to solve their solution and what it's yeah, going to yeah. cost them that's it yeah. we've it's got to so get yeah, yeah we have to get really honest about that and start to doing that yeah. more if i see another website where they talk about how great they are on their home page i think i might bath it's nobody cares they don't care about how great you are how many awards or whatever they want to know oh he they get me Uh, that's me oh my god look they've got transformations I could have that too yeah yeah do that in the above the fold and talk about it and you'll be fine same with your Facebook ads it's all copy related so either invest in a very good copywriter who gets you um and a copywriter will get you once you get clear yourself so I do work myself with clients on getting them to that point of where they would go to yourself or go to a copywriter um, because they're clear on where they are, you know, what their objectives are, their vision, their core values, they know what their offering is and how it aligns. Once you've done all that work, everything becomes easier because Mm -hmm. you're talking to your pain point. You know exactly what it is and you're talking to your client. So it makes your life a lot easier, doesn't it? If a client comes to you and they're like, bang, this is what I offer. This is what I stand for. Go do me an ad that does this. You're like, yes, I got you. Yeah, no worries, I will. Yeah, thank you very much. (laughs) Instead of, you know, I don't know, but I want to do this, but I'm not sure about this. So yeah, try and do the work in the main foundations of your marketing and then your Facebook ads will convert a lot more. Yes. Now, finally, I want to say and talk about how do funnels work with ads and especially in your launch mode? So I know everybody these days, since COVID happens, everyone's in the online world and everyone's launching. Huge thing. So how do Facebook ads work if you're doing, say, your first launch? What should you be looking at incorporating or not incorporating? What do you think? So when you're launching, um, I touched on it earlier, but essentially it goes however your funnel is for that launch. And typically it's not always the same, but typically, um, which is what a lot of my clients have done, you have your lead magnet to start funneling in people right at the top because not everyone's going to convert. Then a live event. Um, So it might be a three-day challenge. It might just be a one, two-hour webinar, whatever it might be. And then after that webinar is when your cart's open um, and then you sell from your webinar. And so when you're running ads, so then we might run ads for, say, two months with your lead magnet because then you're starting to funnel people into your email list and you are going to be contacting them. You're going to get them onto your socials. So it's just another way to get in front of people that haven't come across you and you're not relying on that viral reel or someone to see your post through your hashtags. It's just, an, I guess, amplifying what you already have. So it's not, ads aren't going to make you a sellout because if you have a terrible offer or people don't want it, ads aren't going to work either. And that's, I guess, something to keep in mind. You need to make sure that the offer is something people really want because if you go and start funneling money into ads or anything, you can have the best ads in the world. If people don't want the offer, 
is not, <laughs> nothing's going to help you. Yes. So <laughs> making sure that you have that sorted first and then thinking months. So if your launch is in three months time, start looking at ads now because you want to funnel as many people as possible into the top of your funnel because then when you come to your live event, you might only convert 5% of those people. So you might need 200 people in your live event to convert 5% to get the sales that you want. So that's where your funnel comes in because you need to know your conversion rates along there. So then that's where we can work backwards and maybe we need 1,000 people to download your lead magnet, 200 people into a webinar, and then maybe you make 5% sales from that. So that's sort of how it would work with your ads. So we would run ads for maybe a couple months with your lead magnet, funneling as many people as possible in the top. And then we would run ads for your webinar, get as many people in there, and then we would run ads for your cart open as well. So um, that's sort of why you would start at the end and work backwards because you need to know your end goal to figure out the top bit. Yeah, I love that. And when you put it um, like that and when it comes to ads, because people do get confused with ads and how it all fits in, it makes so much sense. Yeah. You know, it, it's very simple in a structure sense. Because yeah. it does make sense. You build them in, you fill up your funnel, you warm them yeah. up on the side with your email nurture sequences, which is aside from your Facebook ads. Yeah. And then, yeah, when you have something that's going to, you know, provide value for them as a lead into your actual product launch or mm-hmm. your, your course launch, yeah, you have something else. And then you can do your retargeting and you can do all yeah. that stuff we talked about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it is a fantastic asset to, to have to any launch and something because yeah. all of the coaches, big ones around the world or service providers, they all have Facebook ads. Mm-hmm. Um, so don't get fooled into thinking everything is organic. I know social media managers love organic stuff. I get that. But it's a lot of pressure on small business owners to have this organic, fantastic moment. Mm-hmm. If you can have a Facebook ad campaign that's set up and structured for you as well, you're, mm-hmm. you're more than likely going to have that success you're craving because you've got both. I tell yeah, in yeah. my when I work with my clients, it's both. It's not one or the other, if you possibly both. can. Yeah, And I think as well, it's a very strategic way of doing it because you'll say like, because I know reels are great. Reels are great for finding people, new target people, but say you have a viral reel, that's great. But are those people even your ideal client? Like how many of those people, say you get a thousand new followers, are any of them even going to buy from you? And I think remembering that is quite important because you want ultimately you want people to buy from you having 10,000 followers is great but are they going to buy from you so ads is a really strategic way because you're really specific in who's seeing it you're seeing in what countries they can see it ages demographic and interests so you can target people on their hobbies what who they follow um things they like so I think that's why I also love ads because it is really strategic and those people are going to be a much warmer lead than someone that maybe just sees your reels and does a double tap. Yeah, it's definitely an overall strategy. It has to be. Yeah. And each section, email marketing, Facebook ads, uh, social media, all have a part to play. Yeah, but if I just... Yeah, I just don't want people to focus all of their effort in one because, yes, if um, Instagram goes down, reels are going to mean shit to you when you don't have access to anyone. So build a list. So I'm going to take away from this. um, Let's say definitely build a list. Yes. And the best way to build a list is a Facebook ad campaign. Mm -hmm. And a Facebook ad campaign leading to some form of value in exchange for your email. So checklist. Uh, free video series, lead magnet, um, all that sort of stuff. And that connects to your email marketing and you then have a nurture sequence, which is, we're not going to talk about that too much today because that's separate to Facebook ads, but yet nurture sequence is a must. And then you're looking at creating Facebook ads over time to build up that list, leading into what would be your mid-tier offer, Mm -hmm. some form of free challenge or webinar, something where you can show that you're the person for them. And again, they can exchange that by registering and showing up and then you can target them at the end with your actual offer after that because you know that they're interested. You can target those people that have showed up to your webinar 
and you know that they're already interested, why would you not want to target them specifically? Because we've got to remember, salesy is salesy, but salesy is solving a problem for someone. So don't be shy in that regard. You are actually helping somebody with something. So yes, retargeting, people are, oh my God, they're retargeting me. But, But you've showed interest. Yeah. So by showing interest, I'm here to help you. So here, here is a solution is. that I can offer you. You've shown that you were interested in me. Yeah. So here's what I have to sell. And then why would you not want to try that with some some form of retargeting? Because um, yeah. I remember my first introduction to retargeting was driving back from Dunsborough. And there was a resort that was there. And I looked, I thought, oh, I want to know how much that is or what that resort is. So I Googled it as I was, I was in the passenger seat, I wasn't driving. And um, <laughs> I Googled it. And by the time I got two minutes up um, the road or got back into Bustleton, I, every ad was that hotel. Every single ad was the room rate and details for that hotel. Yes. So get them while they're hot. I was interested. Yes. Why would you not retarget me right now? Yes. So they knew that I had been to the website. It pinged back when pixels were not as complicated and yes. it pinged me straight away. So this is what we're talking about, getting people while they're hot and that's at the bottom of your funnel. So yes. ultimately that is what a Facebook ads funnel is. Yes. And that is very structured to understand in a way, I think that's at least worth exploring. Yes, if you're new to it, very yeah. worth exploring. Yeah, and it's just another way because I guess especially when you're in the service online world, business world, um, and you are launching courses, you don't want to be launching the same thing to the same audience. So it's just a good way to keep continually grow your audience. So when you do launch and you do want to sell new things, it's just not the same people seeing things over and over again, which is great, but they haven't bought from you. You just want to continually be bringing people in that are going to buy from you. Yeah. And, and that's, I mean, another side point, that's when it comes down to purging email lists, um, mm. making sure you do the same with the Instagram, um, yeah. you know, your followers and who you follow and, and just constantly be kept up to date. Cause you, yeah, you might have 5,000 email followers, but if 80% of them don't care and haven't engaged in the last, you know, year or so, or two years, you should do it every six months if you can. Um, that'll stuff up your algorithm with regards to open rates and stuff. So it's really important to, to keep on top of that. And that's why yeah. retargeting is great. You're talking to people who are already interested. Yes. Yeah. Now, exactly. How can people get to you? How can they find out more about you? Where's the best place to find you? I know you're moving and you're yes. in the middle of moving countries, but it doesn't mean you won't be online. So we want them to find you. Where are you going? Where, where's the best place? Instagram. Um, so just Kate Burgess Digital is the best place to find me. Um, so pending when this episode comes out, I might already be in Edinburgh. Um, I love it. Yeah. I love it. You're looking at about two weeks' time. So today's the 27th. So yes. So you will be. Yeah. You will be right in Tuesday. amongst it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you will be seeing pictures of Scotland, no doubt. When you're hearing yes. this and you go check yep. Kate out online, you will be seeing Edinburgh. <laughs> I've been, been, and I've been to and Edinburgh everything. and I love it. Oh, and the yeah. castle is insane and Princess Right, it's all insane. Um, so <laughs> I'm excited is. for you because oh, um, thank and, you. <laughs> and I'm a little bit jealous. It's amazing to be traveling again too. And to yeah. move, I mean, gosh, that's a no. whole level. So I'm so excited for you. But you'll be taking, because again, online businesses, you take it with you. Yes, I know. What is that? How is amazing. That I, is amazing. I still have these little like pinch me moments and I'm like, oh my God, this is my life. This is so cool. Yeah. And I, people <laughs> need to lean into that. You know, don't be scared yeah. of it because look at that. You can move literally across the world and your business doesn't skip a beat. Now that no. is what I call living on your own terms. I love that. So the more people we can yeah. get involved in their Facebook ad funnels so they can build their own online business and do the same and do the same if you want, then I love that. So go check yeah. Kate out online mm-hmm. and she has a heap of um, stuff on there that you can actually learn from as well. It's yes. not just um, uh, high level Facebook stuff, although that's there too. It's stuff to get you thinking about it and exploring mm-hmm. it, which, which I love because that's what um, guys out there, you want you want things to start exploring. So I love that. Well, it's been awesome to chat and I've, I've actually taken away quite a few things myself because I haven't oh, done good. a launch ad campaign for ages. So I'm going to go start exploring and putting my own out now, now yes. that I've reinvigorated <laughs> myself with funnels. <laughs> Um, so I'm excited um, but yeah thank you for coming on I really appreciate your help um, in helping everyone get on top of this because it is something I get asked probably the most from my clients how do I start yeah. this because once I've gone through with them to get them into their ideal client in their offers 
how do they get it out? They're like, how do I do this? Okay. So it's great yeah. there's someone so down to earth as yourself to really sort of, you know, give them a heads yeah. up and also be there to help them do it. Love that. Yeah. All mm-hmm. right, Kate, thank you so much. And I'll be watching you online for the move and all the photos. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Bye.